and welcome to the showratings.tv pilot roundtable, a Southgate Media Group podcast. I'm Olivia Richards. And I'm Kyle Tremblay. And we're from showratings.tv, where you can rate and review all your favorite shows, including the new series we're talking about today, The Affair. All right. So I went on Showtime's website, and it gives the synopsis. Um, the affair explores the emotional effects of an extramarital relationship. Noah is a New York City school teacher and novelist who is happily married but resents his dependence on his wealthy father-in-law. Allison is a young waitress trying to piece her life and marriage back together in the wake of a tragedy. The pr- provocative drama unfolds when Allison and Noah meet in Montauk at the end of Long Island. So, yeah. what were your like initial thoughts <laughs> after watching it? It's a very well- heavy <laughs> It is a heavy show, and I will tell you my very initial thoughts, which occurred before watching it, but after reading that description that you just read, which is, I do not want to watch this show. Um, my, my, I, I don't know if it's me or, or I'm not really in the sort of like, I, I mean, I like dramas. I like, I, I, I like serious dramas like Mad Men, and I love The Wire, which we'll get back to because two actors from this are in The Wire, but, um, they're just a show about an, an affair, an extramarital, affair seems depressing to me and seems seems very just upsetting and like kind of like not the thing I want to bring into my life um and so I was not looking forward to this and then uh having watched it kind of did a 180 um I really was intrigued by this and um am very very interested in what this show is doing uh what about you I'm in the same boat. I, I had actually read a review um, from one of the critics for the Huffington Post that he wrote about this. Mm-hmm. And the biggest thing that he had said about this um, this pilot was that um, it, it basically it, it takes a kind of plot and, and a concept that could be very, like, oh, obviously it's very overdone. We've seen it mm-hmm. so many times before. You see, like, an older man start an affair with a much younger woman. But what he did do, what he did say about it was that he was praising the actors and, and the approach the show took to it. Because you're seeing both of their perspectives and you don't know which side is true, which really has me hooked. Like, I'm really, really interested to see where the show is going to go with that. Yeah, there's a um, almost true detective quality to it, structurally, which is that um, the present day of the series is actually a time in, in the indeterminate future of what we're most see of of the setting we're most seeing, right? Like that trip to Montauk occurred in the past because the present is this interview, the, the, these sort of mysterious interviews that are happening um, with the two participants in the the titular affair. Um, but then, like most of the story is taking place in the past, and this episode is split in half. Where the first is split in half, covering the same material. The first half from the perspective of uh, Dominique West's character Noah. And the second half from the perspective of Ruth Wilson's character, Allison. And, um, it's, it's covering the same time frame, but different things happen in the scenes that they interact in, and we don't know which one is true. And I found that very intriguing. I loved it because the first time when I was watching Noah's perspective and <laughs> um, Allison, I was like, oh man, like, I know what's gonna happen. Like, she's gonna start making stuff up and it's gonna change. And, like, I, it was one of those things where, like, I wanted to root for one or the other because that's, like, sort of what we do in American television is we try to give, like, the definite villain and the definite good guy. But there's no way to do that. And that's what I love about this show is it's so dynamic and, and there's no way to pick sides. Like, you're just watching it and thinking, like, oh my God, like, who's right? Is it, like, their interpretation of what's happening? Like, what details are being fudged and sort of, like, what are, what are we really seeing here? Yes, it's so ambiguous. Um, one of the thing, one of my constant criticisms of shows, whether on this podcast or others or in my writing, is that the shows are leading us, are, the shows tip it, tip their hands with regards to who we should be rooting for. And it really bothers me, especially when a show reads it wrong and and has us rooting for the person who, if we look at the situation just with, with neutral eyes, might be the bad guy. And a lot of shows misinterpret who their hero is. And, and what you're describing is, is what I found so intriguing about this, which is that the show is so close to the vest with with what what the, what its own perspective is. Because we're seeing the events from two very different perspectives and we don't and the show doesn't tell you which one is right and like you know the the first go around with um from from uh noah's perspective 
you know, she seduces him. Like, she's the, the manic pixie dream girl wearing the sundress that, that sort of flirtily lifts up on the beach. And she's the one who, like, wants to hop in the outdoor shower. And, and, and he's the, the husband who just can't resist, but heroically manages to anyway. And, and I'm like, oh boy, like, uh, is this where we're going? And then 20 minutes later, we see the exact same, same scene from her perspective. And she's the, distressed mother who is still very much recovering from the death of her child and he is the philandering you know husband who's unhappy in his marriage who wants to hop in the outdoor shower and it's so it's so like it's such a roller coaster and i i really appreciated the way that the show played with our expectations and, and made it so that the show at least for me like really shook me up like with regards to what I was thinking, and, and I couldn't get ahead of it. I thought I was ahead of it, and then it turns out I, w- I was not. The show was way ahead of me, and that was a really cool feeling. Oh no, it was. I just I loved that. I had that same feeling because of like the duality of of what we're seeing, and it's you're not just seeing his perspective of the affair, and you're not just seeing her perspective. Like you're seeing both contrasting, so you're not sure whether like what de- like I re- I really want to see this dynamic kind of develop a little bit more, but like. As I don't know, like what kind of like theories people are having now, because I, yeah. I don't know whether we're seeing like it kind of seemed like from what I was watching that maybe like he was idealizing her and she was like living through her trauma and kind of and, and living through just this this very like gray world that she's trapped in. That's sort of like the interpretation that I had of it. Yeah, it seemed like he had a very romantic perspective on it, which would make sense because he's a novelist. Like he he's he's romanticized that he's turned her into a movie character. Like she's Catherine Heigl in a movie, <laughs> and and she is looking at it from the perspective of someone who you know who who lost a uh, lost her son and has a, is in a very unhealthy relationship with the father of that son. Um and and is like life is miserable and and so she's looking at it from a very dark perspective what do you think is happening with the interviews like what is that you know when we're cutting to the present day and they and they're being separately interviewed um by an unseen party in a in an empty room was, what's happening there i wasn't sure cuz the first time that i heard cuz like at first you kind of just hear the the, the man's yes. voice coming through and i thought that maybe like she was getting counseling and like right. he was being put like his wife like put him like in in some sort of like um counseling to to figure out why he had the affair in the first place but mm-hmm. then when you actually like see the room it looks like they're being interrogated yes i'm wondering if a crime of passion was committed or something and and it turned from like an affair into just something like went horribly wrong that's what i was wondering too and and there is a running motif of a child death in this pilot, um, where, you know, right off the start, um, uh, Noah's son pretends to hang himself in a very traumatic scene. Um, and then shortly after, his daughter nearly chokes to death at a restaurant in the scene that the two, uh, participants of the affair meet. And then we learn that the, that, uh, Allison lost her son. Um, so there is a definite, like, death angle to what's happening here. Um, and so I would, I would buy anything for the reason that they're in that, um, situation, you know, whether, whether it's just some kind of, you know, a, attorney's office or something, but it, it, I agree with you. It looked to me like a police setting. And I would imagine based on the events of this pilot, that something terrible happened and that we have not seen yet. And that will become apparent over the course of the season. I was also thinking about, um, uh, the scene between, um, Allison and I don't know her female friend who was doing the tarot card reading. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, see like a foreshadowing because she started pulling out the various aspects. So like she she tells um Allison that she's going to get involved in something bigger than herself, but then it kind of takes like a, a more ambiguous turn or just yeah that that more ambiguous turn into like I forget which other card she oh. had pulled, but it sort of didn't look like it was going to bode well. Yeah, it was like the messenger or something. Um, yeah. and it was, and the, the, uh, woman, the friend reading the tarot cards, um, sort of took a, had to take like a breath and ex- try to explain it in a way that was obviously like not, uh, tr- she's, she's trying hard not to be negative, but it was clearly negative. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, again, like part of the ambiguousness that I found so appealing about this pilot, like it's, 
I, I'm almost shocked by how much I enjoyed this, considering that I read the description and I still hate it. <laughs> like, I like, I just, this isn't the kind of show I like. This reads to me like a Lifetime show, and then you watch it, and it's like a, it's like a top quality cable drama, and I'm totally sucked in. Oh, I love it. And that was the thing. It's like, it, it didn't, because we were talking about it, and it's like, it's not something that you want to watch when you're just... <laughs> hanging around no. and having an awesome day and you're like, man, I'm just going to throw the show on. <laughs> throw on the affair. <laughs> <laughs> See how that goes. It, it is very, very dark and it's very emotionally heavy and in typical Showtime fashion, there's a lot of sex. <laughs> oh yeah. Show, Showtime knows how to do it. <laughs> Show, Showtime is like like high quality stars. <laughs> you know, star, stars is like a local strip club. <laughs> Showtime is like, the, like a Vegas strip club. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, you know, you know what you're getting into with Showtime. No, exactly. So I I did appreciate that. It kind of um that's like the biggest thing about the show is everything was very like premeditated. Like nothing was just gratuitous. Like obviously, sometimes when you're watching like HBO's Great Game of Thrones, like it's like okay, well, there's just another yes. person. Like what purpose <laughs> does this really serve? Like each moment that you saw something happen in the show like it it serves a distinct purpose like there are no accidents in the storytelling which is really really nice to see yeah and and, and in game of thrones um you know the, the people are naked often for the purposes of, of what's been dubbed sex position where there's exposition scenes that they make palatable by having a woman take her top off and one of the hallmarks of this pilot is that you know it, it, as much as this is, feels like a premium cable drama nobody is monologuing in this pilot no, no nobody like buckles down and gives a five minute speech about life in the world um which is really refreshing i thought <laughs> i thought it was really nice no it was great the only thing that was like a little bit over the top was just uh noah's children <laughs> oh my gosh the son who's like i thought you would be proud of me after <laughs> Suicide. I was like, what is happening? And his daughter, yeah. who's like your typical oh. pissy teenager. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the, the son, the son I am baffled by. Um, <laughs> that was horrifying when his father finds him finally after going through an empty house hanging in the laundry room by an extension cord. I mean, I thought, like, oh my god, <laughs> like, it was, that was horrifying. Um, yeah, I couldn't make heads or tails of the kids, but but I I, I you know I, I they're part of the show's world. Um, for fans of The Wire, I just want to point out that we got a nice scene between uh, Dominic West, who I think is terrific in this pilot as Noah, um, and John Dolman, who played Rawls on The Wire, um, the who is the father-in-law, um, the 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 more successful novelist, um, th than his son-in-law, um, by the pool, and I just. I mean, just as a fan of The Wire, that that was a really cool, like, thing, because those two, of course, had a lot of interaction on that show. But even without all that stuff, it was just a great scene. Like, it's two great actors. And, and Ruth Wilson is, is really terrific in this as well. Like, this is really well acted. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that, like, we usually ask this in other podcasts, but, like, if, if there was mm -hmm. another show that you could compare this to, would there be another that you could compare it to? Or are we kind of seeing this? For the first time. Oh, why am I not prepared for this question? I'm normally the one asking it. <laughs> oh, let me think. Because it... <sighs> Do you have one? No, that was my thing. I wanted to know because this is... I, I literally couldn't draw... The only thing that came to mind was mm -hmm. like, weirdly enough, Masters of Sex. Okay. It's, it's different because obviously they're having an extramarital affair, but like you're just seeing it as it happens. Yeah. And there's a there's a heavily scientific element to Masters of Sex and almost yeah. not, not a procedural in terms of like a crime procedural but a, a sort of scientifically procedural element to that show where there's always this backbone of the research you know and, and, and Masters of Sex can always drive itself forward with the research and one of the reasons that the description for, for the affair didn't hook me is that there's none of that right there's no backbone to this story like when, when for the two seconds that I thought the son was actually dead I was like oh I get it like that's the that's the hook, and they were hiding it. Like this is the story of a man reacting to his son committing suicide, but that's not the case. This is the story of the affair, and somehow they've made it a thousand times more interesting than I thought it would be. And it, it's I don't I can't think of a show that was confident enough to to make that decision to not have like a like a murder mystery in the back. I mean, now there might be a murder mystery that emerges, but it certainly isn't being pushed to the forefront. Um, 
at least in the pilot, right? Like, there could be, like, a murder mystery underlying all of this, and then it would make a little bit more... Like, like I guess my comparison is True Detective, um, minus all of the police stuff, and minus the minus the monologuing. But there's there's a certain feel to it, um, where it's, it's a two-hander, you know, it's a lot of two people interacting with each other, and it, it, the show is really about the relationship between two people, and, um, and... It just in terms of quality, like, and, and then again, in terms of structure, like the fact that, that sh- the shows are told from the same sort of looking backwards perspective. But, but, like, that's, that's just, that's not what the show is. Like, I wouldn't say some a fan of True Detective will like this or vice versa. It's just that there's some similarities there. But this is really unique. This is, I'm excited about this one. I'm really excited because, like, my biggest thing when I was watching this is, like, they took something that's usually, like, a subplot within, like, political. Yeah. Right. Dramas, like you have these kinds of things with like a politician, like you see it a lot on like House of Cards, where like you have a, mm-hmm. have a married politician who's having like his mistress on the side, but it gets like five minutes of attention within like the broader scope of the episode and of of the plot of the general show. But this is the first time that we're actually seeing this isolated as its own plot line, and I thought like this could go really wrong. But then yeah. I watched the episode, and I'm like, holy crap! Like this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's such a good point. That's a, it's such a good point that this is this is like the e story on Scandal. Like this is, this is like there's like five stories ahead of this one scandal, but um, by focusing on it, it, it really um, it it really I mean this feels like it, it, you know we're saying it's about the affair, but it's also about families, and and that's I think what what the show does so well is that it creates this world that um, it inhabits so fully even in this pilot, um, and yeah, it just it just feels like a fully formed, fully realized world that that our perspective is centered around two people. Um, I loved it. All right, I did too. So it's, it's perfect. So I think this goes without saying, but your verdict would be thumbs up, <sighs> thumbs down. You know, I'm gonna have to go with thumbs down. No, <laughs> I mean, horrible. I said, yeah. All this good stuff, you know. I can't get over those kids. No, uh, 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 a clear and decisive thumbs up. A contender for best new show of the season. I'm a, a show that I am definitely going to continue watching and might actually start reviewing. Ah, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely in the same boat. This this has all of the thumbs up, like not just mine. I'm just <laughs> grabbing other people's thumbs. Yes, you are accosting people at yeah. malls and and pushing their thumbs up and saying you'll you'll understand it when you listen to the podcast. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> all right, so that concludes the, this episode of the ShowRatings.tv Pilot Roundtable. We invite you to check out this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts at southgatemediagroup.com and to read about, rate, and discuss all your favorite shows at showratings.tv. You can follow me on Twitter at Richards Olivia and Kyle at Kyle Loves TV and show rating at showratings.tv. Until next time, thanks for listening. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want (laughs) help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows thanks again for listening everyone you're the best fans in the world